Hey guys, I'm Moe back again. Welcome to day 69 in the life of the Galaxy S23. So the end is near. This is the second last day. Tomorrow I'm going to do one last review of this phone. That will be my 10 beast review. Then I'm going to be moving on to the Google Pixel 7a, which is surprisingly already available. They just announced it on May 10th and it is available to order at the retailer on May 11th. But online you can order it the same day directly from Google. And then, amazingly enough, I just check Amazon for fun. List price is five hundred bucks, and if you order it, you can get it the same day, which is pretty impressive. I wish uh, Samsung and all the other manufacturers can do that when they release the next phones. Of course, the A series not going to sell as much as the uh, Samsung phones, so Google don't really need to worry about that. But still impressive nonetheless with all that logistics they got together. So let's jump into day sixty-nine LA for the Galaxy S twenty-three today. I finally use Astro Photography, which I'm going to talk about at the end of the video because if I don't use it now, I wouldn't have the phone anymore. I figure I'd save it for a nighttime. So in the morning, woke up at about 6 a.m. for breakfast. We got some Unbow, aka Pork Bun. Came across a Reddit thread about somebody asking about how to turn off the screen using a case. I didn't know you need a specific case to activate this feature. I remember back in the day when I had one of those wallet style case was when I had the S3 or S4. It was pretty fun, I liked the idea of it, but after a while it got super annoying opening and closing the case. Similar to how the Galaxy Z Flip, you have to open it every single time to use it. The idea is nice for the Z Flip, you can fold it into a smaller phone, but every time you use it, the action of having to take your phone out and open it, just that extra step that I find it annoying personally. But at least this year with the Z Flip 5, they are making the screen bigger and hopefully the outside will be more usable. If it allows for quick text, some web surfing, or just some light usage without me having to open a phone every single time, I think that would be a better experience. But I'm not a fan of that notification glance ability. But just came across this question on Reddit. Guy was asking about how and this current case doesn't turn off the screen whenever he closes it. I guess you need to buy the Samsung official case or at least some case that support the features. So not all cases are made the same. So you want your screen to turn off when you shut the case, get something that is supported. Otherwise, you knows maybe turn your green timer, make it shorter. That may not be the best solution because sometimes you're using it, it'll turn off really fast. But at least when you close the case, it wouldn't be draining battery with the screen just on. We'll just press the power button when you close the case. There's a bunch of options out there. In the morning, made my way over to Shaw's. Snap a bunch of photos for the one time before we send this phone off to the sunset. Mother's Day is coming on Sunday, so all the flowers are out. Took a picture of some apples. Recorded short video clips as well while I'm inside of the store. More beautiful flowers, lots of colors. Phone is able to capture everything just fine. And you're just glancing through these. It all looks great, but if you don't look for flaws, you're probably gonna find them. Set the Snapchat to my friends. Saw some mangoes on sale. Took a picture of cereal boxes. Plenty of good lighting in the store, so everything looks fine. You can zoom in, it is okay. Minus the bottom left hand corner, the prices and some of the text there. It's just a tad out of focus if you try to look for flaws. And then headed back home, spent the morning working. By the afternoon, my phone did ask me to present. Saw another Reddit thread about a guy who had the S22 Ultra looking to upgrade to the S23, S23 Plus, or the S23 Ultra, complaining that his battery was bad with the S22 Ultra because he had the external ship. I would recommend the upgrade if you really can't stand a battery life or you don't mind charging your phone. More often other than that, it's pretty similar phones just in terms of performances. Of course, the S23 is a little bit faster. But on a day-to-day -day basis, you're not going to notice much, but just in terms of battery life improvement, you're going to see a 30% improvement. But I should compare to this, and just in general, if you want a smaller compact phone, I'd rather spend $700, get the S23. If you got the extra money and prefer a bigger phone, then get the S23 Ultra. So that's pretty much my quick summary there. I did respond to the threat, by the way. And this is kind of how I just spend my days, just reading random news, whenever I get a notification from Reddit, I just jump in, answer a question, joining the discussion. 1.30 p.m., phone is at 55%. And then, 
I saw on the McDonald's app they were giving away a free McChicken. No purchase necessary, just have to enter it to the app. So why not? Went and picked it up. They're also offering a free combo meal and flowers on Mother's Day. So good job, McDonald's. Here's my chicken sandwich. Just a nap, a quick pick there. The buns on the right side looks focused, but on the left side, it's still a tad blurry. Even like the chicken itself looks slightly blurry. So that is gonna always be the Achilles heel of the S23. One thing that is pretty cool, I mean, it's not like game changer or anything, but when I was making phone calls around a T-Mobile near me, just to see who had the Pixel 7a available, you can actually turn off on your computer when you make the call on the Google Maps, and then it gives you the option to connect to your phone, so you get a notification on your phone, and then you get to set call. So if you ever just web surfing, you want to make a phone call, that's how you do that. Of course, you can always do Samsung DeX, wireless cast, phone link, and all that as well, but those are not always going to be connected. It, this one is a pretty simple solution. They just send you a notification from the computer right to your phone. You just tap it and call right away. Very convenient. Well, if you have Google Voice and all that, you can call into your computer. And there's a whole bunch of different options. But that was what was convenient for me at the moment. After work, I hopped in the car, drove over to Costco. Again, just to do some more shopping, roaming around the store, got a hypo lapse for you guys, recorded on the S23. And here, when I'm roaming around Costco, my phone finally hit 15%, so this wraps up day 79. Only got about 11 hours of battery life, 3 hours of screen on time. Throughout the day, I was watching YouTube, so the phone speaker does eat into the battery pretty quickly. Last few days, the battery's been taking a little bit of a hit, maybe because I'm watching a lot of YouTube. In general, I get about 12 hours, but it seems like I've been getting 11 and 10 lately. The more I watch YouTube or just have it playing in the background through the speakers. And on my last night with the S23, I finally took it for a spin to test out actual photography. Initial thought? It is kind of a lot of work. If you're outdoors at night, you don't camping or something, you can utilize it. But on a normal day, especially in the winter, it's super cold, so I never had the chance to test out this feature. Now that it's spring and it is a little bit warmer, I decided to take my tripod outside and test out the astral photography. And it does take some effort. First of all, you do need a tripod. And then the features are hidden deep inside and it's not that intuitive. You have to go into your camera setting and then go to the more you have to activate expert raw i think by default it's not even on the phone you have to download it through samsung's store so once you have all that downloaded just activate expert raw on the top right hand corner you're going to see actual photo i don't know why they don't make this a standalone features if you're looking for actual photography i wouldn't think to go into expert raw and look for actual photography so it took some time to set up and find but i was able to take in the set in and find that and by the Fall it takes four minutes to capture one single photo. I am shocked. So anywho, I just went about setting up my stand to use the astro photography. Don't even know if I'm doing it right or not. Just winging it. Got my setup. We did for that four minutes. There is a tiny street light at the um, bottom right hand corner that you can see. So it does give it some extra light. Overall, pretty good looking photo. See some stars in there. Very crisp and professional looking. The first shot that I took. Then I wondered. Why do I need to wait four minutes for actual photography? Can I just use night mode and point at the sky to get the same result? So just what I did, I pointed at the sky, hit night mode, and got all kind of weird reflection. I have my foot light in the left hand corner that turned on, and the bottom right hand corner that light is still there. But during the whole time when I had the actual photography on, my foot light was turning on and off because it's motion sensor. But it still produced a good photo. But this is what happened when I did night mode with all that weird lighting going on. And the second time I try no actual photography I try to crop out that right the light in the right hand corner so everything was just pitch dark me pointing in the sky and this was the weird result that I got so I'm pretty sure there are some tips and tricks how to maximize this maybe you do need a little bit of light the second photo is taken in complete darkness the first photo there were some light flickering and who knows it may have inadvertently helped the photo quality but this one does not look that great oh you might even see that giant banana in there I'm not sure you know, that was by design but banana cake still lives so moral of the story show photography is cool and i just find it to be too much work to wait four minutes for photo and then you want to take another one is another four minutes and then it looks like this 
And then I just went inside. I'm not waiting another four minutes to see we try to recapture a better photo. Alrighty guys, so this wraps up day 69 and Life of the Galaxy F23. Hope you find it to be helpful. Please check out my day 68 video if you haven't already. Where I walk you through another day in a life. Stay tuned for week 10 and the final review. Let me know if there's anything in particular you want me to cover. I will let you know my final verdict, get this phone agreed, and then move on to the Pixel 7a. It's been a great journey. Hope you guys find these in-depth coverages helpful, and maybe you learn something new along the way. I definitely learned a lot on my end. Thanks for the support. As always, I appreciate the time. Remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys to the next video.